cars, vehicles, automobiles, horseless carriage, whatever you want to call them, I love them. And today, I'm going to make my own. In this game, you get to design your car, and not just the body of your car, but the engine and the suspension and all parts of it. And the best thing about it is you can import these cars into the game BeamNG and drive around your own creations. So let me shrink myself down here just like that and welcome you to automation. So let me get myself up into the corner here. That's better. And now we can design our new car and its engine. Now you can choose car models by like the different decades and the styles that were there at the time. And then in each decade, you've got your sedans, your wagons, your hatchbacks, your coupes, your SUVs, your trucks, your minivans, and your big vans. You know what I want to design? I want to design a wagon, a station wagon that I would buy. Okay, now the station wagon I kind of want to design is going to be reminiscent of the uh, Dodge Magnum. These ones look kind of minivanish. Not that there's anything wrong with minivans, except everything. Okay, here we go. A 98 four-door wagon. Now, it's going to look like a 98 wagon, but it's going to be modern, right? So we will click on this and head to the next step. Okay, now the model name is going to be called Miggy's. But then the trim, this particular car, is going to be called the Speed Wagon. So we are designing a Miggy's Speed Wagon. Now I'm going to make this how I would want it, but I'm still going to try and keep it realistic. So I'm not going to just go for the most expensive thing every time. For the panel material, I'm thinking aluminum. Now for the chassis, we can have ladder, monocoque, space frame, semi-space frame, and light truck monocoque. And it would be helpful if I knew what any of that meant. I said I like cars. I didn't say I know how they worked. I want this to be kind of a sporty wagon. I know I don't want the light truck monocoque because it's not a light truck. I'm going to go with a semi space frame. It will be made out of aluminum because that's the only option there or aluminum. Now we can have it front engined or rear engined. Rear engined would be interesting, but it would completely ruin the point of a wagon because instead of cargo space, there's an engine there. So the engine is going to be in the front. Okay, it's for the front suspension, and you can see here, oh, it went away. Okay, now you can see here it's got like your weight and your comfort and your sportiness and the drivability. I don't want it to be hardcore racing, and that's all that it does. I want there to be some comfort there, but I want it to be more on the sporty side. So I'm going to go with double wishbone because that gives me good sportiness, comfort, and drivability. And in the front, I'm going to go with multi-link because it's like the same thing, even better though. Now we have to create a new engine. Now the engine family name is going to be LS. Wait, that's been done. Okay, I'm going to keep this simple. The engine family name will just simply be V8, not V89. It will just be V8. But then we'll have the different variants of V8s depending on what they're used for. So this is going to kind of be on the more performance side of things. So this particular variant of the V8 will be called the Tire Shredder. How cool is that? You buy a car and they're like, what engine's in it? Oh, it's the V8 Tire Shredder. Okay, we're going to go for a 90 degree V8. And also, and, okay, now let me run this by you. Cast iron, that's self-explanatory. Aluminum, that's self-explanatory. Magnesium, I also understand that one. What is A-I-S-I -S -I or A-L-S-I? What does that mean? I'm sure it means something important, but we're just going to go for an aluminum block. Okay, now on the boring stroke, I haven't touched those yet, but what I wanted was a smaller, very revy, shouty kind of V8. Not like a big, lazy V8. So I wanted around a four liter capacity. And it's already there with 244 cubic inches. So I don't got to change that. Okay, I want it to be very revy. So we're going to go with dual overhead cams and five valves. And oh my God, look at that. Zoom in. You can see it firing and moving. That's cool. Sorry, I got distracted. And the head material is going to be aluminum. We're going to go with forged steel for the crank. 
Now for the con rods, heavy duty forge can take more torque, but lightweight forge can take more RPM. I think I'm going to go for lightweight forged so that it can rev more. And the pistons will be forged as well. And this hyper hectic I don't even know what that means. Okay, balancing mass. If we put on a harmonic damper, it will make the engine nice and smooth, less loud, more reliable. But you get lower throttle response and somewhat heavier weight. I still want this to be dailyable, so we're going to put on a harmonic damper. Okay, now this page, the compression, the cam profile, the springs and lifters and all of this, I'm not going to mess with this until we get to the testing phase and I can see all the numbers and what I need to adjust. But thankfully, there's an AI tune button right here that I can click that'll fix it when I mess it up because I don't know what I'm doing. Now, aspiration. I want it to be a small, naturally aspirated engine. The fuel system is going to be injected. And we're going to go for direct injection because it gives you good fuel efficiency and emissions. Like I said, I still want it to be livable with. Livable with? It'll work. And it will be injected per cylinder. Now the manifold, I don't want just the standard one, but I don't need a hardcore racing one like that. I'm going to go with performance mid. Manifold size is 50. 50 what? Okay, now I changed the game to Imperial because I don't understand metric. I'm an American. I can't tell you how many meters something is away, but I can tell you how many yards it is away. Anyway, that changed the fuel. Here, look, I'll show you. I can't while I'm in the game. Okay, never mind. But it changed it from, like, it had a number and then it said R-O-N. But then on the Americanness part, it says A-K-I. Now, like, at my gas stations, there's, like, 87, 89, 91. I'm assuming this premium 90 AKI means, like, 90 octane. That's what I'm used to. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want low quality. We're going to say it takes premium 90 for now, and we'll adjust it later if needs be. Okay, now for the headers, I don't want just basic ones like that. That's not good airflow. I'm going to keep it on cast mid for now, but go up to tubular mid if I need to. Header size is 50. Again, 50 what? It will be dual exhaust because that's just the law. No valves, bypass valves. That doesn't change anything. And I'm not quite sure what it means. I am assuming that it means like no valves is just ordinary exhaust, but bypass valves are ones you can like, if they're, they're closed, it goes through the mufflers and everything, or you can open them and then it's like straight piped. I think that's what that means, but I don't know. We're not going to have any of that. No valves. Catalytic converter. We're going to put on a three-way. Ha! Three-way. Catalytic converter. We're not going to have a first muffler. The second muffler, I'm going to go with straight through, because I still want good airflow, but some dampening. Now, engine aesthetics. Oh, valve cover design. You can paint it. You can make it look like the 80s. You can make it look like 90s space age or basic. Who wants basic? I want 90s space age. That looked amazing. Now the valve color, I want to be a nice dark blue like that. It's very, very speckly. But I like it. Okay, now I could go through and change the color of absolutely everything. But that would take me a million years. So I'm only going to change a few things. Okay, the intake manifold. See that right there changing color? I want those to be the same blue as the valve colors. Valve colors? Valve covers? So I'm going to go back to the valve cover. Copy this number, or this code, and paste it here so it's exactly the same. The air filter. Oh, I like the yellow, but blue and yellow is very Subaru-y, isn't it? There's nothing wrong with Subarus, I'm just saying that that color combination's been done before. That blue is offset nicely by just the metal color of the block and everything else. Okay, that's good for me right now. Okay, now we can test it. As of right now, she's making 315 horsepower and 322 pounds-feet of torque. All right, let's hear what she sounds like. Sounds like a diesel. All right, let's run her through her paces.
Well, nothing went red, so that's good. All right, as you can see, as I move through the graph, everything stays green till right about here when you get up to red line, the headers, the intake manifold, the valves, they're all needing a little bit more airflow. At least I think that's what that means. I'm not sure. But they're getting yellow, and if they're really bad, they go red. So I'm assuming that that's, they're getting worse at high RPMs. Oh, I forgot about all this stuff that I was going to come back to. I want variable valve timing on everything, please. Okay, I'm not going to go that high, but our maximum horsepower is at 6,400 RPM. Oh, this is yellow. What does it say? The engine has a lot of unutilized octane. Consider using higher compression. So now these, like, I know what the compression is. I know what the cam profile is and springs and lifters and variable valve timing. I know what it all is, but I don't know where they should be. That's why I'm glad that it says, like, race, sport, normal. To help out idiots like myself. So it said using more compression... Ooh, that's making my horsepower go up, too. Okay, we get maximum horsepower right there. Okay, the cam profile, if I put that up, I'll get better high RPM performance, and lower you get better low RPM performance and fuel economy and all that. This engine isn't really built for fuel economy, but I still don't want it to be terrible. And I would also like it if the torque wasn't so high up. No, no, I did something wrong with the springs and lifters. Look at that. It goes, did. Okay, now it said I had a lot of unutilized, or whatever, octane. What if we ran it on 86 and then brought down the compression because we put it up to uh, compensate for that? So can we put this back down now? Now the cam profile. See, I don't know what you adjust and how you adjust it to uh, to move around where the max torque is. See, I want it to be lower. If it's that high up in the RPMs, it's just useless. I mean, my car gives me max torque at 4,000 and red lines at 55, so it's just as useless. Maybe that's just the nature of a big V8. Maybe that's just how they behave. I'm gonna click AI tune and tune it for power and see what the computer can make of this. Okay, it's done. We are green across the board. The best it could do was give me 349.6 horsepower and 332 pounds feet of torque. Let's test it. Well, everything stayed green. These are very, very, very blue at idle. Is that normal or does that mean that that's overkill for what I've put on? I don't know. I'm happy with 350 horsepower and 332 torques. So we are going to move on. Okay, I like the four door. I want to keep the four door. Okay, now the fun stuff. I need to find headlights that I like. These ones I might like. No, I don't like that at all. Okay, first of all, before I do the lights, let me get a grill on there. That will help me choose the lights. Yeah, no, I don't like that. That just looks like it's going. <laughs> okay, I like this one. That works for me for the bottom. Okay, what about this? It's the same grill upside down. Where are the headlights gonna go though? Okay, we're getting somewhere with this. Look at that. And now we have a better rough idea of what we want because there's a shape right there for the headlights. No, oh, it's getting dark outside. Hold up. Okay, I got my light turned on, so hopefully you can see me now. Okay, what about this? This looks like it's mean, like it's like grrr. Okay, now we gotta do the tail lights. What about this? I'm liking this. Those work for me. Maybe a little bit higher. Yes, I like that. And then we can have like the Dodge style light bar across the bottom. No, that doesn't work at all. It needs something right here, but I don't know what. See, if I move these down into the middle, that just doesn't look very good at all. And if I make them really big like that, that just looks funny. I do want like a vent thing on the bumper, but not that, that is garbage. We could put badges on. That can fill in the gap. There, look at that, the speed wagon. There we go, the speed wagon. 
by Miggies. Okay, we need a handle to be able to open the hatch, right, like that. I put this little vent thing on here. I don't know what its purpose would be, but it looks good. Wait, where did my headlights go? I thought I had done the headlights. Did I not do those? Or did they get deleted? I honestly don't remember, but I found these ones and I like them and that's what we're going with. Oh, I almost forgot. What is our, our, our brand badge going to look like? I like this one. Let me zoom in there. Yeah, look at that. I like that. Or do I like that more? No, 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 I don't like that. Nah, but I don't like that either, I don't think. The front is going to be badgeless. All right, let's throw a little detailing on. Get some door handles on there. And one for the back door. Oh, look, it mirrors it already. That's nice. We need some side mirrors. Okay, I like these mirrors, but I can't get them to not float right here like that. Because if I move them down, then they just look too low. They don't look right. Okay, I found these ones. These ones are working for me. We need somewhere to put the fuel. We need a sunroof because sunroofs are awesome. Oh, I almost forgot. I didn't want that badge on the front there, but I do want it on the back. There we go. Just like that. Looks like we've got a really strong Wi-Fi signal. We need an antenna. Oh, we need a license plate. I almost forgot to leave room for that. I don't like that, how that's just stuck on there. I would rather have an indent of where it should be. Kind of like that, but I think we're going to have to ditch this little vent. Okay, I can't find a license plate light, so we'll just pretend that it has one. But now that this is here, I miss that little vent we had. There, that's better. These little things right here, see that? We need some exhaust tips on there. Those stick out a little bit too far, but I can't figure out how to tuck them in, so we're leaving it. Now we need some rims. Oh, I like these ones. These ones work for me. This, I, I have been recording for a very long time. This has taken me a while. Okay, okay, that's enough detailing. All right, drivetrain. It's going to be rear wheel drive with a manual six speed. Okay, now gearing and ratios, I don't, I don't even know. We'll put in a geared limited slip. We will offer it with some just general all-around all-terrain tires. She's going to be riding around on some 20s. All right, the tire size is 245, 45R 20s. And the rims will be made from alloy. All right, let's say the brakes, the front brakes are vented. About 14 inches. Four pistons should be good. Back will be a little bit smaller. We'll say 13, same thing, vented for piston. We'll leave the pad type right in the middle. Now this isn't designed to be a luxury car by any means or handmade. It's designed to be a sporty, all-purpose vehicle. So we will go with, let's say a premium interior. And it can come with some nice electronics. All right, now the steering. So the ones with good Drivability, comfort, and sportiness is the electric variable. All the nice um, traction aids, or you'll have the ability to turn them off if you want to. The safety, it'll be very safe. Now the weight of the car I'm not gonna mess with. It's 3,800 pounds. A Dodge Magnum, which this basically is, is 4,260 pounds. So we're lighter and more efficient. Now springs. I want a good compromise between comfortable and, you know, sportiness. I'll go with active sport and then we'll pretend like, you know, you can put it in comfort mode or sport mode depending on what you want. We will have adaptive dampers. Oh, presets. We can do a preset for sport. Oh God, look at all these warnings. The car oversteers. The front dampers are hard. The rear dampers are hard. The rear Brake force is very high, a lot of overdrive, rear tires are wide, the brakes fade, and the clearance on the engine is getting narrow. Okay, it said the rear dampers are hard. What if we what if we do the preset to normal? That got rid of all the uh, comfort issues. You know what? It's supposed to be a sport wagon. So we're going to do the preset for sport, and if you want a comfy car, then buy something else. Oh, look, we can simulate it around the test track. Let's do that. That's very loud. That's almost pulling 1G in the corners. Look at that, that was all over 1G. All right, how fast does it get on the straight? 
41 I saw. And around the chicane, up here through Adam's apex. Coming up now to the second to the last corner. And across the line. The noise went away, that's why I kept talking so loud. Two minutes, 24. Is that good? I do not know. Oh look, I found detailed stats. 19.1 miles to the gallon, which isn't great, but not bad for being a big V8 wagon. And an estimated cost of $29,800. $30,000 for that, that's a bargain. Okay, we've got a lot of warnings here, but they don't say fix, they say consider. Consider the following. But I'm not gonna worry about those. What I am gonna do is come into this photo mode and get my thumbnail. Okay, thumbnail acquired. And now I can click export car, make sure the car name is correct, and I can export the car and drive it in BeamNG. But that is something I will have to do in the next episode. I will see you then.